In 32 years as a high performance coach, you know there's one question keeps getting asked over and over again. It comes in two forms. And the first form is, Paul, why can't I make myself go to the gym? You know, I bought a 12 month membership, I signed up, I committed the money, I paid up front to make myself go, and the first six weeks was fantastic, and then I stopped going. So, could you explain to me why? I don't do something that I want to do that when I do it, it's good for me and I really enjoy the results and what, like, what's going on? And of course, the reverse version of that question is why can't I stop myself doing the things that I know that are bad for me? You know, why is it that I can sit there saying to myself halfway through a box of chocolates, you should stop and I can't? Why is it that I can sit there late at night watching garbage on the TV, telling myself to turn it off, and I can't? And I thought what I might do is show you what we call a negative spin cycle, and that'll explain these kind of behaviours. Remember, uh, we're probably going to be able to cover most of your life with this one single concept. We call it a negative spin cycle. What it starts with is an event. Now, I should have said... A set of circumstances, but if you look at my board here, there's not enough room to write that. So what happens is we get something comes into our life. For example, uh, and this is an example we will kind of expand as we go on. For example, we get an invitation to a party. That's just fantastic. So the invitation comes in the mail or somebody rings us up or texts us and says, come to the party. And we immediately have a thought about that. Now, if you're like me... If you're like me, then you're a bit shy. So if you get an invitation to a party, then the first thought that occurs is, I don't go well at parties. I'm not that good at mixing with people. I hate those networking things. Uh, 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 oh, what am I going to do, etc. Now, we don't recognise that ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, as a thought, but it actually is kind of like we're stuck in limbo. Very, very quickly after the thought, whatever that thought might be, comes a feeling. So as a consequence of the thought, there's an emotion. I hope I've written that well enough for you to see. So the emotion turns up, or the feeling turns up, and that emotion is like, oh, I'm going to be embarrassed. I don't know how to handle people. I don't know what to say. You know, we kind of say, what do you say to someone when, when they you get past what you do for a living, that kind of thing. So the feelings of being embarrassed the last time I went to a party and I didn't do too well, or a networking event where I got nailed in a corner, or I stood there all night feeling lonely, uh, that emotion starts to turn up, either old ones or new ones in anticipation of what's going on or what is likely to happen. As a consequence of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an action. And uh, most likely that action is going to be, uh, I'm busy. You know, that's the night I've got to wash my hair. Can't go to your networking event because I've got to, you know, my cat's going to break its leg. Uh, so the action is to refuse the invitation or to knock it back or, or whatever. Uh, you want to say about that. And as a consequence of that action, we get a result. And isn't it funny that we've come back to purple? Oh, I've spelled that wrong. Um, that's the T, that's the L. Isn't this fantastic? Um, you're learning from an ex Woodwork teacher, by the way. Spelling was not my big uh, forte. Uh, but high performance coach, no problems. So, what happens? We get a result, which is that we stay at home and we feel lonely. So, it, like I said, we call this a negative spin cycle. So you just put what happens is that we spin around and the same thing keeps occurring over and over and over. So most people say to me, Paul, how do we stop this? If you look outside, if you look at people who don't really know what they're talking about, and that's pretty much everyone, then what's going to happen is the rest of the world is going to tell you, look, you just have to try harder. But I'm going to ask you a serious question. If you put more energy into this, What's going to happen is you're going to spin around faster and faster and faster. And uh, that's going to be more devastating and that's going to be the opposite of what you want. So what are we going to do? Well, essentially we're going to look at how we think. And the big thing for me to say to you first of all is the problem is going to be here and here. So there are two things that we've got to do. Let's look at the thinking process and then we'll look at the feeling process because they're so interrelated it's difficult to talk about them separately. The thought process, basically what happens is there's no one up there to argue with you. When I say to myself, I don't feel like going for a swim, there isn't anybody up there saying, you idiot, you're hot, why don't you go for a swim? It's just kind of like, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like getting changed. You know, my swimmers are wet. I hate putting on wet swimmers, which is now a feeling. And so you'll see thoughts and feelings are so powerfully connected to each other that they kind of merge and we have them sort of happening simultaneously. So the thought... Um, I'm no good at networking, I don't mix with people very well, I'm shy. There's no one to argue with that. And I'm suggesting that we should start here and say, okay, if there was someone to argue with that, what would they say? 
Now, most of us know that there's two people in here. There's me going through life riding the roller coaster of the ups and downs. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And there's me who's watching. When you think about it, which is the real one? Which is the smart one? Well, the really smart one is the one who's watching and who can say, you don't have to think that. You don't have to think that being hopeless at networking means that things are going to go bad. Maybe you could be hopeless at networking and go along anyway. Maybe you could just go along and be shy and meet someone who shows you how not to be shy. In other words, what is the alternative thought process? I'm not saying change your mind just automatically. What I'm saying is, what are the alternative thoughts that could spring up? For example, hey, you're beauty. An invitation to a place that I don't want to go, to meet people I don't want to know, to do things I don't want to do. How exciting is that life is an adventure compared to staying at home with my cat with a broken leg? So that's an alternative in terms of way of thinking. The question is, who's arguing? So the question, what happens here is that most of us live lives of reaction. We react to the thought as if the thought carried some weight. So I'm going to give you a test. If you're a parent, have you ever said to yourself, I'm going to kill that kid? Well, I'm a parent of two, and I've had that thought multiple times. And it frightens me how recently I've had that thought. So, I'm going to kill that kid. We just don't act on it. So we don't live in reaction to being a child murderer. What happens is we dismiss that thought. And what I'm suggesting to you is that you can get a whole bunch of thoughts in, in your life and just say, not that thought. And it's not a Buddhist concept, but it's such a powerful concept. Not that thought. Because as soon as that thought's out of the way, well, what is an alternative thought? And I'm going to suggest to you, not killing the child is a great place to start. That's an alternative. You don't have to act on it. You could go right ahead if you want to. But essentially, changing our mind means not reacting to the initial thought as if it's the only thought, the only possibility, the only thing that could happen. So if that's the first thing. What could I think alternatively to this? What other possible thought process could be involved? Secondly, have a look at your emotions. So my thought is, I'm homeless at networking. The emotion is, um, feelings of likely to be embarrassed, um, maybe remembering some old embarrassments, um, feeling like I don't know what to say and therefore feeling like I'm stupid or embarrassed or whatever. And so have a look at emotions and look at the construction of the word emotion. You'll see the word emotion is made up of energy and motion. This is a feeling within our body. What you'll notice is that you can go ahead and do what you want to do regardless of how you feel. You see, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing what's the right thing to do, despite the fact that you're scared. So the second thing to understand is you do not have to act on that emotion. You do not have to respond to that emotion. You don't. Well, reaction would be a better word. Responding means choosing an emotion. Could you choose to feel anticipation? Could you choose to feel um, maybe there's an adventure going to happen and um, that could change the direction of my entire life? Maybe I'm going to. Maybe if I go along, I might meet the person I'm going to marry. I might discover a whole new career. I might meet someone who's going to dramatically, powerfully, and forever change my life for the better. And why wouldn't I look forward to that? So emotions can be chosen. So there are two things here, acting together, thoughts and emotions, acting together, reinforcing each other, that we need to stop from continuously repeating the past. What that, work on both of those, and what you find is it allows you to take another action. In the case of the invitation to the party or the networking event, if I can think differently or feel differently, both of which affect each other, then maybe I'll accept the invitation. The consequence of accepting that invitation is that I will go along and I might bump into somebody who either wants to be my best friend or my worst enemy or whatever. Either way, it's going to be an adventure. And what that does, it creates a different result for us and it stops us spinning around in the same circle. That, my friends, is a fantastic thing to be able to do. Can you do it just like that? No. You will have to practice. But if you keep this negative spin cycle in mind and remind yourself, I just need to practice, then it's not going to be long before it becomes second nature.